the Move tool. So the Move tool, I've already created this slide. I've put all of these words, these shapes, I've put them all on this page, obviously, prior to this webinar. And I just wanted to have stuff on this page so you could understand how the Move tool really works. If you've been playing with Aver Plus and you've been getting a little frustrated or you don't understand how to edit things that you have on your page, it's because you're probably not too familiar with the Move tool. And I'll show you how it works. When you click on the Move tool, it allows you to access anything you've put on the page, whether it be a shape, a picture, a video, or a simple text box. It allows you to select it, and then you can move it. If you double click on it, if, if it's text, you can then edit the text. Um, you, can, you can also right click on it, and it will allow you to do a lot more with that object. So if I wanted, for instance, this word shiny, if I wanted another copy of it, I could clone it. If I wanted to get rid of it, I could cut or delete it. I can copy and paste it. Um, one thing I always like to point out is the lock function. So uh, if this was an activity, for instance, that I'm going to click out of my right-click menu here for a second. If this was a, an activity that I created for students to use up at an interactive whiteboard or with the Aver pens, if you have Aver pens in your classroom, or even if a student was called to come up to the computer and use the mouse to actually complete this activity, I wouldn't want them to be able to move my directions because it's not really part of the activity. So what I did was I locked them down. I can simply just click on whatever I want to lock. So let's click on this shape because it's not locked down. I don't want that circle to be able to be moved. I can right click on it. And I'll point out right now if you use Mac, Instead of right click, there's going to be a little clipboard that will show up in the corner here. If you click on that, it will give you all of these options. So I can click on this, or I can hover over the word lock here, and then go down to the word lock all. And now that shape is locked down, and it cannot be moved or edited by the students. But they can still move words into that circle without the circle being touched. So that's what the move tool is really helpful for. But it's also great because if you are in the Move tool and you double click on any of the white space, so I'll just double tap in this white space, it will make all of your menus disappear, which is great. But if you don't know what's doing that, it can be frustrating because you don't understand where your menus and your toolbars are going. So double tapping in the white space is just a quick way to make everything disappear so you have a, a, a neater work area. If you want them to reappear, just double click again. And again, if you lose any of your menus, so let's say our options panel we've, we've exited out of, to bring that back up, just remember, you can go to Window, and I want to bring back up my options panel, and you can, you can always put it back up on your screen again. But you'll also notice when I click the Move tool, I have some different move options. One is just the cursor, so I can you know, select objects and move them. But there's also the Spotlight Move option, so if I click that, I have a spotlight that I can use to kind of spotlight different areas of my, my document or my, my project. I can change it to be a circle, a square, or a triangle, and I can also change the outside color to be semi-transparent if I'd like. So I will make it 60%. And now you can see sort of through the outside of the, the circle. I just want to get rid of that, so I'll hit the X. And there's also the Aver Visor tool. So if you have our document camera, you may be familiar with both of the, the things that I've just shown you. But the visor allows you to just click and drag down, and you can reveal a portion of your page as quickly or as slowly as you'd like. So that's, don't forget about those two options in your Move tool. Um, moving along. There are also, so if, if, if you're interested in inserting text or making lines on the page, you can do that very simply by using your tools down here. But if you have a picture or a video or even a song or something on your computer saved that you want to insert into your project, it's very, very easy to do. You can do it one of two ways. So the first way would be go to go up to your menu bar and click on the word insert. The drop-down menu will give you options. What do you want to, what do you want to insert? A uh, picture file, just click on picture file. And you can look for pictures that you have saved anywhere on your computer. So I could pull in this picture of uh, a lizard, and we could use describe, or adjectives to describe it, and we could write the words right up there or type them on the screen. 
to make a list of the class. Um, I'm going to give you a quick hint. If you do insert pictures and you want to resize it, go to the word lock. If you right click on it, go to the word lock, lock the aspect, and then resize it. That way it won't get disoriented. So that's how you can simply insert, if I wanted to insert videos, I could do that directly using the insert tool. But Aver Plus also has a built-in library that you can put media into so you have it available for any Aver Plus project that you're creating. So if you go to settings and the word management, I'll give it a second to open up here. If you click on this very, very last tab, it says My Library. You can create different folders for subjects or classes or it's really up to you however your brain likes to organize things. But I've created different folders for different subjects. So if I have media that I want to have specific to language arts, art, arts projects that I may create, I can just click on the language arts folder that I've created, hit the plus button, and then I can look on my computer for something to add. If I double click on it, it will then sort it where it belongs automatically. So it will automatically go in the audio file, the image file, video, Aver Plus, or flash file. So that's how you can, you can start to build up your own library. If you want to access your library really easily once you've got it all set up, you can go to that window tab and have your resource library open. So I can go to Language Arts, and I can find everything that I've put into my resource library, and then add it to my, um, my project very simply. So this is just a little flash game that the students can play as a class. I'm going to get rid of it, though, because it makes a really obnoxious sound. So those are the two ways you can insert media. We'll go forward a slide. There's also some special tools that are available in the Aver Plus software that you won't have to locate outside. Um, if you click on it, you'll get a menu here. And there are just some counting blocks that you can throw onto the screen, um, some three-dimensional shapes you can put onto the screen, dice, some different measuring tools, some timers that you can set and have up on the screen. Um, if you are using an interactive whiteboard or the Aver Pen set, you can throw a keyboard up there so that the students can actually create text boxes and use the, the keyboards. And there are also some different grids that you can place in the backdrop. So those are available within Aver Plus as a special tool. So